Hi, my name's Willy. I'm going to be looking back at each class in vanilla and answering a very simple question. Was it any good though? Today, we have the Hunter. Here's the points I'm going to be looking at. The leveling experience, how good they were at it and how fast they could level. The class quests, what were they for and how well they fit. PvE, dungeon and raid performance. PvP, open world or battlegrounds. And tier sets, the effects they had as well as the looks. The Hunter, my first character and level 60 in World of Warcraft. The opening of the vanilla cinematic has a hunter, an image which must have influenced many decisions. Hunters seem to attract a certain kind of crowd, and I've no doubt I was one of them back in the day. Affectionately known as Huntards, and there's three things that categorised a Huntard better than anything. Weapon drops? That's a hunter weapon. It's purple though, mine's blue, I need it. In vanilla, anyone could roll on anything, even if they couldn't actually use it. Uh, generally speaking, melee weapons were just stat sticks for hunters that provided very little benefit, whereas there'd be huge bonuses for melee classes whose damage is directly tied to an increase in DPS on a weapon, especially when it came to proc weapons with no stats like the Flurry Axe or Bone Reaver's Edge. Hunters for some reason could use almost all weapons apart from the one and two handed maces and even when it was a legitimate upgrade for a hunter chances are it will be a much larger upgrade for a melee class just keep in mind it's not always a hunter weapon the melee hunter so imagine this you're battling your way through black rock depths 30 minutes in still plenty of bosses left and suddenly you notice the hunter appears to be pretending that he's a warrior just dpsing in melee range next to his pet need a repair you ask helpfully no replies the hunter and at that moment you know he's run out of ammo no ammo and your damage drops significantly that is even if you have trained your melee weapon skills don't be the melee hunter take care of how much ammo you're carrying and the third one pet control Notice how in recent expansions, if you jump off a ledge, your pet will path back around to you and not pull anything? Do this in vanilla and a conga line of enemies will be following your pet, ready to wipe your party because Mr. Huntard forgot to dismiss his pet. Again. In vanilla, pets had three status options. Aggressive, which will cause your pet to basically function like a wild NPC and attack anything that gets too close. Don't ever use this. Defensive, your pet will attack whatever hits the hunter. Most of the time don't use this. And passive, which is where your pet will not engage enemies, which is actually useful. Pet assist did not exist. Honestly, the default options aren't great. Uh, make sure you bind some kind of macro to actually get your pet to attack what you're attacking so it's not sitting there idly by your side. Finally, Growl. Pets have an ability that generates a lot of threat. Turn it off if you have a tank in the party. Just, just don't be that guy. With all that said, let's go on into the main points. So the Hunter is the strongest leveling class in the game, yet better than Warlocks. Well, both have pets. Hunters are less constrained by mana and their pet puts out a whole lot more damage, especially as you start working your way down the Beast Mastery talent tree. Incidentally, Beast Mastery is the go-to specialization for leveling. Hunters are so good because of their pets. They can retain aggro. Uh, you have a wide choice of pets. Some have stronger defensive capabilities, some more offensive some a mix of both. Pets are unlocked at level 10 and really from that point onwards it's smooth sailing for the hunter. Hunters also unlock Aspect of the Cheetah at level 20 which offers a really good 30% movement speed bonus at all times. Add to this 2 out of 2 on the Pathfinding talent which fortunately just happens to be in the Beast Mastery tree for a 36% movement speed buff at all times by level 21. In fact Aspect of the Cheetah with 2 out of 2 in Pathfinding is better than a level 40 mount for a period of 25 seconds and even then it's only 4% slower. On top of this, hunters can reset aggro quite easily by dismissing their pet and then using feign death which will certainly save your life on many occasions. Keep in mind though, feign death can be resisted in vanilla. These points add up to making a hunter a safe, fast and efficient leveling class which is ideal for any solo play. The most important quest for Hunter is without a doubt at level 10 where you learn how to tame and manage your pets. And pets aren't just mindless creatures that will follow you no matter what in vanilla. They're more like, um, more like Tamagotchis I'd put it. They have loyalty and happiness. Treat your pet poorly by not feeding it, dismissing it or having to revive it too often and it will deal less damage and eventually run away. Treat it well, feed it the correct food Keep it healthy and it will deal increased damage. Always make sure you have the correct food on you for your pet as well as ammo.
Once you hit level cap, there's a massive quest series leading up to a number of rewards, key among which is Rock de La, Longbow of the Ancient Keepers. In order to obtain this, you first have to defeat Major Domo Executus and Molten Core and loot their ancient petrified leaf, which will start the quest, and this isn't a 100% drop chance either. You then have to slay four challenging demons across Azeroth that all involve some kind of special use of hunter abilities to neutralize the threats they pose. Uh, nowadays, there's a lot of information available on how to overcome these challenges, but if you were to go in blind, it would really be quite a challenge. You also have to defeat Anixia as part of this quest, which in itself is another large attunement just to get into Anixia's lair. Hunter's class quests are sparser than others, but they do make up for it in terms of how impactful they are. PvE-wise, hunters are a bit of a mixed bag. Skilled hunters are really able to stand out from the crowd by taking advantage of their massive toolkit of abilities they have. They have hard CC from freezing trap, learn to reveal stealth mobs, Distracting shot into feigned deaths can buy time for a tank to survive. Hunters were relied upon in some bosses to pull at the start of fights, so the tanks can easily separate a boss from any adds. Viper Sting can be used to boom casters. An aspect of the wild provided a much needed nature resist buff for certain fights. Hunters were both capable in dungeons and raids and offered a lot to the group in terms of utility. The only issue with Hunters is that their scaling was not that great. Whilst they started strong in Molten Core, by Nax Ramis they'd fallen down the ranking somewhat, but they were still not bad at any point. A Hunter starting in Molten Core specialisation may look something like this, with the 231-18 build, focusing on getting True Shot Aura as well as 3 out of 3 in Short Footed, which provided a good amount of hit chance, which can be difficult to get early on, making it incredibly valuable for reasons we'll go into more later. True Shot Aura was a big factor why you didn't mind several Hunters in your raid group throughout the entirety of Vanilla. The attack power buff it provided to their group was substantial. Hunters were also the only class that could remove frenzy effects from bosses or trash via Tranquilizing Shot, which was learned from a tone dropped by Lucifron. A quick Trank Shot could be the difference between your tank living or going splat. Many bosses in vanilla had a frenzy component to them. On top of this, you're unlikely to be hit capped with, even with the 3 out of 3 sure footed talent by this point, so you always need to make sure you have a backup onto ready in case your tranquilizing shot misses. As more hit gear is acquired, points in survival tree can be moved over into beast mastery in the 2031 zero build. While this does provide more damage, it's important to watch your pet's health as they can easily go down if unattended. Finally, for the late, late game geared Nax Ramus Hunter at some point, it may be worth going the 021 30 build to take advantage of the lightning reflexes talent, which at max rank will boost your agility by 15%. This combined with the good amounts of agility on Nax gear will likely be the final form for Hunters in Classic. The main downside of this specialization is really having to listen to the Warriors and Rogues QQ that they're losing some AP, but overall it's a more versatile spec and is great in both PvE and PvP. Speaking of PvP, that's the next area I want to look at. Perhaps the most important thing to know about Hunters in Classic is the Dead Zone. Have a quick look at the tooltip of any ranged ability and you'll notice it has an 8 to 35 yard base range, melee being 0 to 5 yard range, so stand between 5 and 8 yards away from a hunter and they'll only be able to hit you with very few abilities. If range is their biggest strength, this is their biggest weakness. Even still, hunters have a variety of abilities to keep melee classes away from them. They have three different ways to root for 5 seconds through talents. On top of other CC talents such as Intimidation, Scattershot, Wyvern Sting, etc. Hunters have a lot of CC. Taking down a good hunter is like an endurance challenge to get through their lines of defence. As for fighting other ranged classes, Beast Mastery tended to pull ahead where you can rely upon kiting and letting your pet do a lot of the damage. Bestial Wrath makes your pet unstoppable and hit a lot harder and was especially good versus mages who would want to close the gap and abuse the dead zone in order to get an advantage. Aimed Shot was a vital part of the Hunter's kit. Immobilize someone and charge up the big 3 second whack. If this thing crit, it could one shot some lesser gear clothies. I remember spending many hours in Alteric Valley on the backlines picking off unfortunate priests and mages. Hunters also brought some good options versus Rogue in from Fleur and Hunter's Mark. 
And in PvP, hunters were a very versatile class and never really at a true disadvantage. Tier set wise, hunters also did very well. Not only did the first three raid sets look really great, but each one had beneficial bonuses, uh, which isn't something you can really say for every class. Tier 1 from Molten Core, Giant Stalker, 8 set gave a nice bonus to multi shot, which was used in both AoE and single target. The pet resistance from this set, as well as the Dragon Stalker set, were also a lot better than they sound. They essentially made your pet much more difficult to kill in both PvE and PvP and made a strategy of trying to CC the hunter's pet or kill it off as a much more difficult strategy. The exposed weakness effect was more than four times more powerful than the highest rank of hunter's mark at the cost of being short duration but I was unable to find out whether this set bonus was used and what priority it had on debuffs, whether it would be able to take a debuff slot, though it looks good in theory if you have a bunch of hunters. Finally, tier 3 Crypt Stalker was exceptional. Again, 50 mana per crit means you could use so many more abilities per fight, and it's easy to see how a flat damage buff is good, but considering the resource behind it is often more important in Classic. I'm also going to take a quick look at some of the notable pets here. A rare cat in the Badlands called Broken Tooth will no doubt be highly sought after. This kitty cat had a unique 1.0 attack speed. This A allowed it more chances to proc Frenzy and B pushed spell cast back more in PvP. And this cat is likely to be the overall best pet for the entirety of Classic. The PvE, cats were also good due to their stat weighting and favouring damage over anything else, as well as being able to learn two focus stomp abilities in Claw and Bite. Wolves were good for the same reason, along with Ferocious Roar. Once Sulgarub hits, Wind Serpents from the Raid Zone are very strong too. Leveling wise, Owls and Bats are favoured due to their Screech ability that reduces enemy attack power in an AoE. Cats are also good due to their high damage. Many tank oriented pets like Crabs or Gorillas tend not to be as good, as despite taking less damage, it doesn't outweigh the lack of damage they put out when compared to others. And a quick honourable mention to Lupos. This was a rare wolf in Duskward that did pure shadow damage on its auto attacks, meaning it completely ignored armour and could shred warriors or paladins in seconds if you're infected into the beast mastery tree. Unfortunately, for hunters, this got nerfed, so Lupos will only do physical damage as of patch 1.9, and seeing as Classic is releasing on 1.12, we won't be able to experience this. So, the Hunter. Was it any good though? Well, yes and no. They were about as good as you were at playing them. This sounds like a really general statement, but it applies to Hunters to a greater extent than many other classes. If someone completely new to World of Warcraft wanted to play Classic and asked me what they should play, I would recommend a Hunter. After all, chances are the majority of their time will be spent levelling, why not make it the best experience possible? And I wouldn't recommend Hunter because they are perceived as easy. I think Hunters are a perfect example of a class that's easy to pick up, but very difficult to master. And the difference between a Hunter pressing a few of their buttons versus using their whole toolkit is very clear to see. If class representation feels anything like vanilla did, hunters will be a dime a dozen, but the skilled ones will be a diamond in the rough. As always, thank you very much for watching, and uh, let me know what you think. Bye.